few months ago, I showed how I use Rome Research for capturing notes from church, and my process has evolved a bit since then. I thought I'd show what's new. Um, one big change is I now use the Remarkable tablet instead of the iPad for taking notes in church. You can see that on the right. Uh, it looks kind of fuzzy in here. It actually looks pretty good on the tablet itself, but the Windows app, when it syncs it in, looks a little chunky, but that's okay. These are meant to be notes to um, sort of inspire my actual notes that I'll build in Rome, not something to keep, so I don't care how they look. And my handwriting is not the best, and that's okay. Uh, a big part of why I do this is for future reference and linking things together and all the great things that Rome does, but perhaps an equally big part is just forcing me to think back through the sermon and digest it a bit more. Uh, same reason I do book notes and stuff in here, so I can really think through the book, uh, pull out some of the great quotes that resonate with me and that kind of stuff. Um, in today's case also, I've already done a lot of the pre-work for today. This takes longer than I'm going to show you here because I've already done a lot of the work ahead of time. Uh, with two main things. One is whenever I hear a quote in there, I try to research what the actual quote is and make sure I have the context correct. And then also to load in the scripture. And so I'll show you what I mean by that. So like our first one is going to be John 12. So I have a page for John 12. I created a normal page in Rome called John 12. I paste in all the verses from Bible Gateway and then I prepend each block with the full verse. So it's easy to find later. Um, I could just say John 12 at the top and say one, two, three, four, five, but I put the full verse so it's easy to find it later. And where this is neat, um, and those of you that are not familiar with Rome, the reason I like to do it this way is I can reference individual blocks. You can see here, these ones on the side are showing these blocks, these, these verses have been referenced somewhere in the past. So I can click on the one and see where that was referenced. It was actually back in October. And I can click on the notes there and see exactly what happened in that October sermon, why John 12 was a part of that and kind of dig in more to that if I want. So that's where... Over time, as I add more and more scripture in and get more and more of those references, it should become pretty valuable. For now, most of the time when I get a new piece of scripture, I don't have that book in here at all. I have to load it manually, which is fine. It's worth doing over the course of the next few years. I'll get it loaded in. And because of how Rome allows exports, um, even if Rome ceases to exist, I can export all my data, and move it to a similar system and keep on going. Um, and then also for every book, I have a, a page for that book where I link in. You can see the book of John. I have a lot of it in here yet, but not all of it yet. Uh, but that way I can go to John. And again, it's just another link back into John 12, but kind of navigate around that way a little bit. So I can go from here back up to John. If I want to go to the whole New Testament, I could click that and get back to that. So I kind of built out much of the Bible there. But back to today. So we're going to process through these notes real quick. So today, um, the sermon was Share the Light by Ike Rigard. Both those have plenty in there. I always like to write down the songs that were played. Like it could be interesting over time to see what songs with, with which um, sermons. So I keep track of those. So today was Battle Belongs. And again, I've already loaded these in as well. Um, Holy Ground and O Come, Let Us Adore Him. And again, like other things, I can click on one and see. I, you know, I have the artist and the lyrics and stuff. Then I also have the other places. So this actually happened to be October 11th for that one as well. So. Uh, that song sort of ties into this type of um, sermon every time, it seems. So uh, that's pretty cool to see that that similarity there. Um, so getting into it. So he started with a quote from Robert Louis Stevenson about lamplighters. So um, an anecdote from Robert Louis Stevenson um, about lighting the way. And then the quote was, and I have it pasted elsewhere here. Just to make sure I get it exact, so I'll be pasting some things in. Um, from when he was a child, it said, I'm watching a man punch holes in the darkness. Um, the only way about lamplighters um, lighters and how they were lighting the way. So we have that. So that's the actual quote there. Um, and I really could perhaps even do a lot of times for quotes, I'll do this. I'll say Robert, oops, if I can type his name right, Stevenson, quote. And then I can put some other tags in there if I want. I think that's good for there. And then some of the verses. And again, I've already built out those, so I can do a block reference instead. So we pulled in John 12, 46. There's that one. And then he did Isaiah uh, 9, 2. And there it is. And then he talked about Shekinah glory. Um, which I've heard him talk about before and didn't really dig into what it meant. So I did today just to kind of figure out what is going on with that. And so reading about that, so as I highlight that and make that page, I can now click on it, and I found some stuff about what that actually means. Um, so you can, if I ever see that again, I can reference it, see where I've talked about it in, in context, but also see the details of what it is. So um, we have that piece. Then he mentioned 1 John 1, 5. I have it wrong here. Let's do it this way. 
1 John 1, 5. And then he pulled in some things from Rick Warren, and this is where scratching notes is helpful, but it was hard to keep up. Um, he said he's talking about days with disappointment, doubt, stress, and so I wasn't quite sure, so I wrote down enough words there. I thought I'd be able to find the full reference to it later, and I was. Um, so I'll paste in what I was able to find there, and we'll clean this up. So he mentioned uh, pieces of a sermon from Rick Warren. We talked about dark days of disappointment, which was from uh, Job 30.26. So we'll search for it this way. Again, I've already built these in. So I can see, and yeah, these aren't verses that were shared in church today for us, but from that other sermon. But again, I can kind of pull things together and see how it goes. Uh, Psalm 22.1. Let's get it down here. Uh, dark days of doubt were from John 12.35. Um, and then the dark days of depression. He had a couple places for that. So it was Lamentations. Um, it was 319. And then also 320. And this is kind of where my uh, duplicating the title gets a little weird because as you read through multiple verses, you can't read real smoothly. But I still think it's worth it um, for the advantages you get. And then from Psalm 88.16. So let's add that in. And again, I've already spent the time to build these out in Rome, which did take some time. But again, over time, should work out well as those become saved. So jumping back in the notes here, um, he had a slide up called The Dark Days of Doubt, which um, sounded like he was going to start digging into some of them, but he didn't really. But we'll go ahead and add it here for now. Um, as I dig through things later, it may make more sense to me. And then he had an interesting quote. He said, unexpected events will cause unusual emotions. That's what I have from it. So there's kind of that. The next step really would be to kind of summarize more my thoughts on what I saw there. But this is kind of how I pull in the, the info from the sermon, get things linked up. Um, again, partly just so I can kind of refresh myself. I can build out the actual scripture in Rome. And then as I view these things later, I'll be able to see the references back to today. Uh, if I ever see Shekinah Glory again, I now have a page for it that has the description and the places I mentioned it. Uh, so, yeah, so that's just kind of a quick look on how I pull Bible notes into Rome. Hope that's helpful for you. Thanks.